We're back for our very special playoff edition of the walkthrough. Uh, we can call this the walkthrough redo, but... Uh, <laughs> I like that. It's got a good ring to it. <laughs> but uh, we're here to talk about some storylines heading into the playoffs and uh, some big matchups this week. And for starters, we have uh, several teams trying to avoid the upset. Uh, have a few number one seeds playing this week, one not playing this week. But uh, for starters, Hilton Head will come down to take on North Augusta, a North Augusta team that's uh, been strong this year, uh, number eight in the polls, and they'll be looking to avoid uh, uh, any problems in this Hilton Head game. They'll look to avoid a redo of last year when North Augusta had an undefeated regular season, a region championship, but Westwood came down, pulled off the upset. So obviously you can expect that North Augusta will uh, have everything you know, in order to a T heading into this game. Hilton Head's got to make a long trip down, bringing a lot of athletes with them. But yeah, North Augusta, you know, one of our four region champions. Back-to-back uh, -back years for them, first time since the mid-70s. Lots of good momentum to hold on over there. Obviously, they closed it out strong in region play after the, uh, the schedule opening loss there. So, you know, a lot of things going well for North Augusta right now. And, uh, you know, plenty to, uh, to be excited about for them as they, you know, try to, try to avoid uh, what tripped them up last year. Definitely. And uh, elsewhere, another team that's rolling right now and, and looking to avoid having any issues is Barnwell. They have that, that offense going, and uh, obviously uh, they'll be looking to do some more big things against an Andrews team that uh, comes in with some good DBs and uh, some guys on defense that can really pose some issues. But I think uh, Dwayne Garrick and company uh, has shown the ability to do many different things if need be, and I think... Uh, this game won't, won't be any different. Yeah, I feel like the uh, the hallmark of a Dwayne Garrick offense is the ability to be multiple, and uh, they've, they've shown that. Uh, familiar matchup with Andrews, third time in the last four years that they're meeting in the playoffs. You know, so there's going to be, I mean, this is a situation where in a lot of these cases, it's like, okay, well, they've played a bunch of times, but a lot of those same kids weren't there. There's going to be a lot of the same kids that have seen each other several times now in the postseason. Adds an interesting element to it. Barnwell coming off that uh, undefeated regular season, first one in 20 years, and by winning the region, put them in a particular spot on that bracket in the lower state where, you know, some of the big contenders like Bamberg Earhart or Carver's Bay are down in the other little quadrant there. So, you know, things are setting up so nicely for Barnwell right now that I trust that uh, they'll be more than ready to go to take care of business in this one to keep that road rolling. We, uh, we spoke about one of our teams being off, uh, a team that uh, has been off for quite some time now. Strom Thurmond will get back into action after two weeks uh, right. with nothing to do but uh, practice and get ready for the playoffs. They'll welcome Bishop England, and a Bishop England team that has an offense that has uh, shown the ability to get things done in the run and pass game. And in particular, their quarterback can uh, kind of run the ball and pass the ball for them. So they'll be facing a, a multiple threat uh, from them. But uh, uh, Strom Thurmond ended the season with a lot of momentum uh, going through, running through that region schedule. And uh, they'll look to, to come back out with that strong offense they have. Yeah, undefeated region champion. Uh, you got to think they're going to be rested and they're going to be healthy after going those 10 straight weeks with a game. Been off for a couple weeks. And, I mean, work, I think, you know, there's been a couple years recently where Thurmond has, you know, like last year didn't have the one seed. But I think we're kind of used to seeing Thurmond as a region yeah. champion in the playoffs. There's a lot of, you know, that kind of rebel tradition that they have. And you know it's going to be a, a, a nice rowdy one over in Johnston on Friday night. And uh, I, like, I like their chances. And, you know, again, another one of these region champions that uh, – I think that, that they just have sort of that extra gear to avoid that upset. Definitely, definitely. And I spoke about Barnwell. They, Strom Thurman also got put in a, uh, a friendly portion of the bracket. I think that's <laughs> some of, yeah, and I think that's some of, I mean, look, we talk about not looking ahead. We're the ones who get to look ahead. The yes. players, the coaches, they don't look ahead. But I think that's also part of, you know, looking into this, maybe that, that extra gear, that little bit of extra excitement. They may not talk about it, but they've looked at those brackets. They see, you know, how their road can uh, can play out. Definitely, definitely do. And uh, our other team, obviously, Wagner Valley is the other uh, region champion. A well-deserved yes. uh, first-round buy for Wagner Valley. But they Wagner's will be Alley. off this week, and they will await the winner of the game between Estel and Whitmire. So we'll get a chance to talk about them. Is it speaking week. of familiarity, yes. uh, Estel, you know, region opponent, Whitmire, 
everyone down here in our, our yeah. Class A uh, <laughs> contingent, they all play Whitmire. So yeah, we're, all, uh, we're all old friends around here. Yeah, so we'll get to see them next week. But the other home game this week is actually a number three seed in South Aiken. A three are, versus three. A three versus three. Uh, that wacky 4A <laughs> bracket. The predetermined bracket position meant South Aiken got the home game. So North Myrtle Beach will make the journey across the state. <laughs> a journey is one way to put it. That is a 220 mile trip that uh, if you're South Aiken, you're saying, oh, I'm glad we're not making that drive. <laughs> yes. uh, you know, you wonder how quick of a start you can get off to on both sides of this. If you're South Aiken, it's, you know, and some of those past South Aiken teams we used to see were kings of the quick start. Yeah. This year's team obviously a little different, but you get off to that quick start against a team that has <laughs> been on the road all day. You can really take them out of it early. Or if you're a North Myrtle Beach, I mean, what a surprise that would be to get off to a hot start. Yeah. One that you know they might have to have. Definitely, definitely. After a, a long trip, I, I would say a. Uh, that's a long. Hey, that's a long trip if it's us going down the interstate. Yeah. But on the <laughs> on the bus, that's different. So I think the X factor has to go to South Asia and, and that one, and not having to make that. All trip. of these games, we've got long drives here. So yes. that's I mean something that that we'll be keeping an eye on on Friday or. In one case, on Thursday, we'll yes. be keeping an eye on you know how these teams start the game. Definitely, definitely. And uh, speaking of the Thursday game, so segue we, so right we're into bluff, it. Uh, Silver Bluff will be taking on Southside Christian, making the trip up to Simpsonville. Uh, they will be doing that on Thursday night now instead of Friday through, due to the threat of inclement weather. Uh, and Silver Bluff will be going into this one trying to duplicate some of the success they've had on the defensive side of the ball because Southside Christian has a strong offense coming into this one and the momentum of uh, some uh, strong results and they really look forward to trying to be a contender in, uh, in the upper state and trying to get to a state championship game this year. Yeah, it's a Southside Christian that we used to see him at the Class A level, yeah. you know, what, three years ago we, uh, we were seeing him. They've really acclimated nicely to the 2A level. Yes. They've jumped up without a whole lot of difficulties. Obviously, you're going through region play without giving up a point. That's, yeah. uh, you know, that's, that's pretty good stuff regardless of who's in your region. So your reward for all of that, being that number one seed, <laughs> is you get maybe the scariest number five team of, of all time to get that Silver Bluff team. The way that they're playing defense right now, the way that they're just rolling right now, from having the win that no one thought they would get against 96, then closing out still in a do-or-die elimination-type game against Fox Creek. I mean, they're coming into this hot. Definitely, definitely. And actually, that's my upset pick of the week right there. So uh, they've, they've got to drive, too. <laughs> they do they've got to drive, too. That's something like 155 miles, I think, up to uh, Simpsonville. So, again, we will see how Silver Bluff starts this game. If the defense keeps going the way that it is though I feel like they will be able to limit or limit yeah rather limit how quickly Southside Christian can get going definitely and uh, I, I believe uh, the Silver Bluff defense has several things going for it they fly to the football and that secondary is kind of a strong secondary you don't really think about it much because a lot of times you see a, a running team but uh, that secondary has performed pretty well even though the linebackers are kind of what make that defense go but uh, they've got ball hawks yes. in the, in the defensive backfield that is a good way to put it so uh, they'll be trying to do more of that uh, when they head up there to Southside Christian um, elsewhere we're kind of going to go to the the usual teams that get hot at this time of the year down in Class A football. And this we'll, is their time. We'll start with Rich Spring Mineta. As you may know, they tend to make runs in the playoffs, regardless of the sport. Um, but uh, they, they're going to start out with a familiar opponent also, making a trip up to Timminsville to, uh, to play that team. And uh, going into this one, obviously they've kind of gotten some things going offensively and uh, on the defensive side heading into this one. So they, they're looking to continue that and uh, – kind of show off some of those uh, things that maybe in the passing game that... Uh... <laughs> well, and, you know, the key to doing that is you get Collier Sullivan going in the run game. Uh, you know, a, a freshman quarterback's best friend is yes. to have, you know, a run game like that, to have the area's leading rusher to hand the ball to. And you know, Timminsville remembers exactly, you know, what Collier Sullivan can do to him. It was his long touchdown run in a 7 nothing game last year that, uh, that was the winner um, you know, the return trip with Ridge Spring Mineta heading up to Timminsville. But, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, they're, they're looking to go to their third upper state final in the last four years. And a lot of it is they're able to build momentum 
over those final couple of regular season games, carry it into the postseason. Didn't play last week. North, uh, you know, didn't have enough guys, had to forfeit. So able to, to heal up some guys that had been banged up. It's a, a Ridge Spring Mineta team that, I mean, if they get the run game going early and start clicking, they could be uh, trouble for a few weeks, not just in this game. Definitely. And in the other portion of that bracket, you have another interesting matchup where the seed says these teams are the same. Uh, uh, Willis Nelco will travel up to McCormick. However, Willis Nelco has the better record uh, overall, uh, but they'll be taking on a McCormick team that uh, we've seen in the area before. And Willis Nelco has a big chance in this one to kind of move on and uh, kind of start what some of that momentum we know they could have in the postseason. Yeah, you know, we're used to seeing Willis and Elko make playoff runs. What we're not used to seeing is Willis and Elko playing a first round game. Yes. We haven't seen that in a while because. Well, they win the region every yeah. year and have that bye. We're also not used to seeing them on the road. Um, that usually comes in, the, it seems like the third round they go to Lamar. That's you know what we've seen in, uh, in past years. So this will be something different. They've got kids with playoff experience. They've got kids who have you know, won some big games. And they're facing a McCormick team that they're kind of similar in ways. It's a McCormick team that they've had some things kind of snowball on them this year where one thing's gone wrong, and then several more did after that, which led to some of those losses. But Willis and Algo's trending upward right now. You know, the game against Denmark might have been their best performance of the year. Came out, were able to throw it all over Estel last week. So the offense now is able to take advantage of whatever the opposing defense tries to force it to do. And if I'm a defensive back at McCormick or anyone else <laughs> in Class A, and I see that Keyshawn Tony's coming off a career-high receiving game, um, I'm dreading it. Like, yeah. that's a scary, scary thought. And, and watching lots of film from him, I, I don't really know what you're supposed to do as some of those defensive back. He, he seems to always have the size advantage. Well, and he has the size <laughs> advantage to where you can't even interfere with him yes. in a lot of cases. I mean, you've got guys that, I mean, even if they wanted to, if they wanted to just wrap him up, take him down, and uh, accept the penalty, they're not strong enough. They can't. Yeah, so, uh, so what do you do? Willison has uh, several things they can turn to there. And uh, kind of before we wrap up here, I guess we should also mention why Ridge Spring and Williston are on the road. Uh, obviously, they didn't win the region. They didn't get the two either because Blackville Hills got the other buy in that. Uh, <laughs> that's a, you know what, that's that's a scary Blackville Hilda yes, team too. So they'll be sitting waiting for a, a, a winner of a game for uh, next week. Um, and um, But that those are all the games we have from our area. And... Uh, Another successful yeah. walk. We're uh, yeah, we're guaranteed at least one game next week. Yes, <laughs> um, I have a feeling we're gonna have several. I, I I do have a feeling we will see a lot more. Um, but uh, until then, for Kyle Dawson, I'm Eric Russell. We will see you out there on the sidelines this week.